butterflies are being studied here in Africa for over 300 years, so there's an awful lot of information. The diversity is undoubtedly in the rainforest, where most of the biodiversity on the planet is. And seeing as West Africa still has a fair amount of rainforest left, there's very significant biodiversity here. As far as butterflies are concerned, the, the highest uh, demonstrated biodiversity is in Cross River State. Ghana is a bit different from Nigeria. First, because it, it lies in a different biogeographical region. There is a good network of uh, forest reserves, which were more or less protected in the last 50 years after the independence. So I think they did a quite a good job in Ghana. One thing that is important is that they are fairly well known and they can be used as indicators. So we know a bit, quite a lot about the butterfly's biology and the presence or absence of a certain species can sometimes tell you something about the habitat. So you know that some species, for example, will only be found in an untouched rainforest. If you go into any forest and you find a lot of these, that's a good sign that the forest is in good condition. They are first primary herbivores the majority of the butterflies, especially in the larva stage. They have a certain interaction between the host plant and the butterflies and the larvae, which uh, is very important to the ecosystem. They actually form a huge biomass. Uh, they, they are, if you go to the forest, you can actually see a mass of butterflies. And the same for the caterpillars, what you don't normally see. But they are really important food source for a wide range of other animals, including birds, wasps, spiders, uh, predator beetles, etc. The most important connection is that um, the resources of the forest in many cases are sustainable. Okay, so if you have a high presence of diverse butterflies within a forest, that's what's just been described here, it means that the forest is biodiverse in general and so there's large resources within the forest. So the, uh, the people who are working in, in conservation with the communities, which is what your question is really about, the big message which they continue to give is the forest can stay there and your livelihoods can stay as long as you're focusing on sustainable management of the forest. attempt is to try and estimate the total number of species in the forest. What that involves is uh, going around and uh, collecting butterflies in, in a restricted manner so that we can truly identify what the correct species is and then plotting the number of species which we found over time and trying to project that curve to get what the total number of species is. So far uh, I started uh, that survey I think around 2002 and uh, continued it for about five years. I haven't been collecting here for a couple of years, but we found 150 species so far. Uh, Shafi's been here for 10 days and added 36, I think, to that list. So uh, we're able to, to use that curve, which is now beginning to have quite a large extent to it, to try and predict what the, the total number is. We're estimating at the moment, we don't really have final results, but it's going to be somewhere in excess of 300 species. Uh, and once we have those numbers and can then look at the specific species which are present or not present, we'll be able to get a good determination on just how, how rich the forest is. There's a fairly uh, good survey which was done in the 60s west of here at Olakameji um, Forest Reserve, which no longer exists unfortunately, and we can use the comparison with that data to tell us uh, what's missing here and what's present here. I think what is left here in the IITA is a really important refuge for anybody who wants to carry out a reforestation or habitat re restoration uh, project outside of IITA because what is in here is, is a real treasure of the nation and even with the reforestation program it will be expanded and therefore the habitat will be restored into this, its more or less original stage, probably not now, but in a couple of hundred years. Uh, first of all, the semi-deciduous forest is a forest which is at the northern end of the uh, rainforest rain belt. So uh, the, the fauna which is there is, uh, and flora sorry, is, is rather different to what you'll see further south. So you already uh, have a restricted uh, type of species which you might find there. 
than being at the westernmost edge of one very large continuous forest block. Um, means that again there's some separation in that area and the, the opportunity to have unique species present which aren't present anywhere in the world. The Dahomey Gap is a, is a very different um, biogeographical region and it completely cuts off the area where Shafi's been working in Ghana so you, you then again form another continuous <coughs> forest block where you'll get the, the own separate species. So the, the point I was making is that you're in a geographic region which can have some uniqueness to it and it's in fact already been proven there are three species which are unique in Africa around this area which means that they're endemic and they were found in equivalent forests, forests to the IATA one but those forests no longer exist they were forest mm. reserves which have been chopped down so you may have a certain uniqueness here where you can uh, find species which this may be the last stronghold of them that's essentially its importance The importance of it, it's got, it's got uniqueness, which, uh, which is different to what Cross River National Park has, for example. So there's some uniqueness because of its geographical region. Uh, and if it goes, then there's nothing left at all. So it's the last refuge of the forest of its type in this area. It's possible we might be able to extend the butterfly survey somewhat. I'll certainly be able to support anybody who's doing that. Every single community had their own forest, which they protected. It, it might either be a kind of sacred forest. And I'm sure there are still lots of communities in Nigeria who have the land, but they don't have the, the expertise to come down and support them. And IITA might develop the kind of center of excellence and export it to outside, to other communities, regions or governmental bodies and uh, who will follow the, the uh, uh, example. Uh, you can see various statistics in terms of how much rainforest is left in Nigeria as an example, but uh, we're probably around 10% of what the original rainforest is, and what's left is still uh, very vulnerable indeed. Um, so uh, we're, we're now at the point of extinction of certain species, if that, if that forest isn't protected any further. Um, there's a huge amount that's still unknown about rainforests and there's still a lot of enormous value in rainforests for the communities involved, but also uh, just basic scientific value. And then there's uh, medical value as well, um, which is uh, being brought out of forests all the time. There's obviously the huge impact on climate. So all these things uh, are stressing just how vital it is to have uh, proactive strategies for conservation for the last remaining resources which we have. And uh, donors can have enormous impacts if they work through the, uh, the charities and organizations which understand how the production is done in a manner which is uh, sympathetic and even uh, beneficial to the human populations which surround that. And that's, uh, that's how they can essentially help. But the, the funding is very urgent and, and very critical and uh, what was discussed at the Copenhagen Climate Summit is that we're actually right at the last point where we have an opportunity to have an impact. Uh, a matter of decades from now it will be too late to try and make a change. Well, as most people, I got also inspired by someone. My, my cousin was actually collecting butterflies. So I started to collect butterflies at home in Sweden. But then I went during my PhD education, I was in Nigeria and uh, after being to a Nigerian rainforest it's impossible not to be fascinated by the amounts of butterflies. So when I kept doing my research I decided I wanted to use like butterflies with a model species I studied for research and of course when I'm here I also do monitorings to try and assist conservation. Efforts um, to see that uh, first trees in the compound. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Very enjoyable.